that lady in parliament when it was very difficult to say the kind of things she was to say. And, you know, no Kenya would ever remember Chalagat. Not, not even in the corridors here. You would see a picture of Philomena Chalagat because we forget. At least if you go to, to the courts, thanks to Chief Justice Mtunga, if you go to what used to be dungeons there in the Supreme Court, where, where, where many of us were taken before, you will see a bit of the history of this country, not just about the judiciary. You, you'd see, you know, uh, events and photographs and paintings of people who contributed to making Kenya a democratic nation. So I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that as we remember President Kibaki, that one of these days, in a, we're going to probably have a Hall of Fame here. Remember the arguing Skodek of this world? Yeah. Uh, a great barrister. Who remembers arguing Skodek? Yeah. You go to parliaments in all over the world. People like those are remembered. Yeah, but here, uh, I think the only thing is partly colonial history. You see pictures of people uh, who are speakers here. And I'm, I'm not talking about Speaker Lusaka. But speakers are not by themselves the parliament. The parliament is us and everybody. So I hope and, and that's the thing. So I hope when one of these days when people from Bugoma are walking along the corridors of this parliament, they will see a photograph or a painting of Moses Wetangula eh? or, or, or Mutula Kilonza who in a few years has made a difference eh? or Wambua who wants somebody to be number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, which level? Let me say something about it because you know President Kibaki was also number two. Yeah. Let me say something about this thing. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the exercise of presidential powers rests on the president. Rests on pre president to treat the presidency as a, an arranged marriage. I think it's wrong. Huh? And <laughs> arranged marriages never really work. Huh? Never really work. Don't force yourself into a marriage. Never force yourself into a marriage. You'll be like being forced into a marriage like uh, Marie Antoinette. Yeah? The, our mother married, uh, arranged a marriage between uh, Marie Antoinette and uh, Louis, Louis, Louis the 16th. And she found out that Louis the 16th was not really a man. <laughs> yeah. I will not go to the details. But arranged marriages, marriages are just like that. May I, may I believe that when you are a lady, a gracious lady, and you want to enter into a union, you make some kind of choice. Mr. Speaker, you, you want to be informed, Senator? Yes, Wendy? yes, yes, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Senator Chilayako. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my senior. Uh, this point of uh, forced marriage only works if one party submits. I just wanted to inform my senior. Uh, the forced marriage only works if one party submits. So when one party has the potential to rebel, the marriage breaks down. That is the problem we have had in Kenya. You get into a forced political marriage, then one rebels. I think it can work if uh, one of the partners submits to the other so that uh, it fits what has processed our family. So I hope those who are forcing themselves into political marriage, one will submit. Thank you. Provisions for sometimes is not enough. It's performance. <laughs> Uh, but but uh, I'm, just, I'm just taking a, a little bite on this ongoing debate that uh, whoever is involved in that process, uh, let ultimately, uh, because, because I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, let me predict something. The next president is going to secure a five-year term depending on what he does in the first one year. And in the first and and in the next one and a half years, 
he can secure his second term. But if you have a, a relationship where there is dysfunction, you know, the president be, uh, falls the moment you're sworn in. And Kenyans don't have space for that. People are actually suffering in this country. When I walk out there, uh, I, I, I mean, they, they're suffering out there. K Kenya, not out of our f fault of the government or anybody, with the COVID pandemic and now with Ukraine, there, there are a lot of problems out there. And, and in order to turn things around, and a lot of things have been done, like building the expressway. But are we going to be able to pay for it? Amid the uh, rises uh, in the cost of living and fuel prices, are we going to be able to do it? Uh, and therefore, the next president, and I, I know who that person is going to be, and I can see him all smiling because he knows what I know, and he knows what I know is true, that from that very first month, like Kibaki, the very first month when the NAC government came to power, the very first month, and my friend Moses Watangula was there, the very first one month, things were happening. And the public was having confidence. Kenyans were the most, the happiest people under the sun. Uh, because government was performing from the very first day of its uh, taking authority in the land. Uh, and therefore, I hope that President Kibaki leave us, leaves us with a sense of goodwill in the nation. We have peaceful elections and that we, we, we learn from his uh, very rich legacy what we can do to turn this country around. And that's not to say, Mr. Speaker, that uh, you know, he didn't have his, his faults. Yeah. I, as a person, I had many differences with President Kibaki when we were sitting on the opposite side of the house. Uh, but he enjoyed a good debate. And the, the other good thing about him, he, he always stayed behind in the house here. He would spend hours until midnight. Yeah, midnight. Uh, he, had, he had a famous tree there, which some of you know what happens <laughs> under that tree. Yeah, but he would listen. He would be he would be having camaraderie with members. And after a, a debate where you are having political differences, uh, you're arguing against each other, then you go for a cup of tea or a cup or a glass or something, and, and then you continue the debate and come into a semblance of, uh, of understanding. Uh, let me finish my speech by saying um, my, my just two experiences with uh, President Kibaki. One, Whenever I used to talk to Kibaki about Alguin's Kodak, he could spend an hour talking about Kodak. I think that's the politician he admired most. Um, and, and if you go to the Hansard, you'd realize why. You know, because Kodak liked humor, he liked weight, he was good on his feet, uh, just like Kibaki. Um, I remember one of the cases that Alguin's Kodak did when he was defending. Those day, days, people would be arrested for, for loitering with intent. And, and, and uh, Arguin's defense in court is that, you know, if you, if you are a normal human being, you cannot loiter without intent. <laughs> Most of the time when you're walking, you know, you must have some intentions of going somewhere. And Kibaki would repeat that one. But the other thing that I, I, I want to say that I remember him for was when we were having a final uh, meeting at Harambe House uh, in the presence of President Kikwete, Mkapa, and um, the, uh, Kofi Annan. And he was there alone sitting with, uh, with His Excellency Raila Molodinga discussing the trouble that had come out after the 2007 elections. And uh, the only person who was called to that room was Wako, as Attorney General. And Raila Molodinga insisted that uh, he needed his lawyer to be in that room. I 
I was privileged to be in that room. And many questions were thrown around in that room, arguments. And when we reached some understanding, when it was suggested, and, and of course outside the president's office, you know, everybody who was who in government was standing outside, knocking the door, wanting to come in. And Kibaka would keep on saying, no, no, don't allow them. Uh, they are, they are, what a letter to Fitina, he would say in Kiswahili. So, at the end of the day, when an agreement was reached, I was dispatched with Wako to go to Serena and do a draft, which was signed that very day. Now, I can imagine that if we had all receded to our teams, the Grand Coalition government would not have been formed. But the President Kibaki has a sense of saying, you know, wachana na watomba wakoinji. And that goes for somebody who was giving, seeing a bigger picture and what needed to be done at that moment. I mourn President Kibaki. I mourn with other Kenyans that President Kibaki goes down in history as one of the greatest parliamentarians, one of the greatest debaters, one of the best presidents, and one of the best academic scholar that this country has ever produced. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Honorable Senators, I now propose the question, which is that, uh, which is that aware that the late Emilio Mai Kibaki C. A. GH was the third president of the Republic of Kenya between December 2002 and March 2013, in addition to serving as the fourth vice president of the Republic of Kenya between 1978 and 1988. Noting, uh, nothing, noting that the late former president, Mike Kibaki, had a long, illustrious career in public service spanning over 50 years where he served as a member of parliament for Donholm and Odaya constituencies for 10 parliamentary terms from 1963 to 2013, and as a cabinet minister in various ministries for 28 years from 1963 to 1991. Appreciating the late President Mike Kibaki, Kibaki's work in setting the foundation for the Kenya's socio-economic turnaround and in 